Okay, hey, welcome. Good afternoon. This is very exciting. I'm so thankful that so many people showed up for your baptism. I'm and you're uh, greatly loved. That's what it reveals to us. People Amen. love you. Amen. I, uh, we love you. Your family loves you. And we're so excited about the decision you made to follow Christ all the way. It was a long time coming. Absolutely. And we were thinking, we were studying, we were wrestling with God, and suddenly you felt depressed by the Holy Spirit. And now it's time. Now it's time. Well, baptism is a very special experience. It's when someone wants to join the body of Christ and wants to become a part of his family. Now, that doesn't mean that you're perfect or that you can walk on water, but it does mean that you want to be a part of God's family. And here's the beauty of baptism. We know that Jesus requested baptism from his cousin John at the Jordan River. And the word of God reveals to us that he received the baptism of repentance. Now, scholars have wrestled uh, over the passage found in the gospel. Why would Jesus receive the baptism of repentance when he never committed any personal sin? Well, Jesus did not confess and repent of personal sin. But Jesus was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. And he received the baptism of repentance because he knew that you and I, even when we confess and repent of our sins, going through these corrupt channels, needs some doctrine up. Our confession and repentance even needs to be covered with the role of Christ's righteousness. So I believe, according to the book of Psalms, and looking at the narratives in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus confessed and repented not of personal sins, but he confessed and repented of your sins and mine. So that when we come to Jesus and we say, Lord, I want to give my life to you. I want to be a follower of you. I want to do your will. At times, we will make mistakes. And we will have to fall at the feet of Jesus and confess and repent of sins. Now, that doesn't earn love or acceptance with God or confession and repentance. And we're told in, in Romans 2, verse 4, that the goodness of God leads us to love. Repentance. It's His great love for us that motivates us to go to our knees and confess and repent of sins. So baptism is like, Lord, I realize that I'm a sinner in great need of the Savior. I've made mistakes, but I want to give you my life, and I want to follow you. Now, does that mean that Krista will never make any mistakes after she's baptized? No. <laughs> so, so we as a community are there to encourage her, to, to speak words of kindness and encouragement in her ears. Um, I can remember uh, a number of years ago, my daughter came here, she's 30. Can you believe that? Why don't I like her that the child is 30? <laughs> Come on, you can go with a big smile on her face. She took 
So then we have two, but we're there for what purpose? No words of condemnation. The word of God said, for God so loved the world that he gave us only to be God and Son that whosoever will. Believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to what? Condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. Now the reason why Jesus did not condemn the woman caught in the act of adultery is for a number of reasons, number one. She had no choice whether she wanted to be born into this world. She had no choice of who her parents were. She had no choice of her genetic weaknesses. And she had no choice but to sin unless she was born again. And people born into this world are not born born again. So Jesus, based on this, you know, she had no choice of how she was raised and stuff like that. And this woman is doing the best she knows how. I'm not here to condemn her. So what did Jesus say to that woman? I'm here for you. And I'm here to tell you, I will pay for the penalty of sin, and through my grace, you will learn how to walk. Go and leave your life of prostitution. Why? Because of your, your infinite value to me. I care for you. You're a part of my family. And so, Krista is going to be a part of the family. Amen. Amen. And she has been studying and coming to prayer meeting and all that. Indicated to me that she wants to become a part of the South Side Seventh Avenue Church. So we're so excited. Aren't we? Part Amen. Of Amen. Amen. We're blessed. blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. And so um, I have my phone. Here. there. Okay. I'm going to have some, uh, I'm going to have you stand up. I have some um, simple kind of vows of agreement. And uh, I'm going to go through them quickly. 13. Do you believe in God the Father, in His Son Jesus Christ, and in the whole uh, the Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of men and women, and believe that through faith in His shed blood you are saved from sin and its penalty? Renouncing the world and its sinful ways, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And do you believe that God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you your sins and given you a new heart? Number four, do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, recognizing Him as your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and do you claim His promise to strengthen you by His indwelling spirit, so that you may receive power to do His will. Do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, and that it constitutes the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? Yes. Do you accept the Ten Commandments as so binding upon Christians, and it is your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep the law including the fourth commandments. That's the new covenant promise. We have no power to keep God's law in our own strength. But God says in the word, I will write my law within your heart and I will cause you to walk in my statutes. It's not about us doing something grand for God. It's about us humbling ourselves before God, allowing Him to live out His life in and through us. Okay, the next one is the soon coming of Jesus. Okay, is the soon coming of Jesus the blessed hope in your heart? And are you determined to be personally ready to meet the Lord when it comes the second time? Yeah. We're living in an except word that we know that Jesus is coming soon, don't we? Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts, and do you believe that the uh, gift of prophecy would be in God's anti-church? Do you believe in church organization, and are you here to support the church through your uh, personal gifts? Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and that you are to honor God by uh, caring for your body? Yes. 
okay. Now, do we have a motion pending? Uh, if kind of baptism to invite Krista into the membership of the South Side Seventh Day Adventist Church. Is there a motion? Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. We have a second. All in favor, raise your hand. join us in singing please do uh, hymn number 620 the hymnals are right there these uh, burgundy colored books in the front or behind you 620 on Jordan's stormy banks <laughs> a little bit to 499. 
is in the word the, the scriptures say that God is the author and finisher of our faith he's the author and finisher of your faith and he's the author and finisher of Christ's faith and the Word of God says in the book of Philippians that he has begun a good work in Christa and he will continue that good work in her life and so this is the good news of of the gospel no one seeks after God, no, not one, the Apostle Paul wrote. But I'm thankful for a story found in Luke chapter 15 of a shepherd that diligently sought that one sheep that was missing in his fold. God's love is active, not passive. He's not up in heaven with his arms folded saying, I hope you make it to heaven. If you don't, someone else will take your place. He is actively pursuing each and every one of us every day. And in Luke chapter 15, there is another amazing story about a lady that had 10 silver coins. And when one of the coins was missing, what did she do? She lit a lamp or a, a candle, grabbed a broom, and diligently searched throughout the whole house until she found that one coin that was missing. Now, did the coin know it was lost? No, but the owner did. So this reveals the truth of the character of God. God is actively pursuing each and every one of us. He is looking for us, calling for us. In fact, the very first picture that we have of God after the fall of Adam and Eve was what? Adam and Eve were hiding. They were afraid of God because they had a misconception of his character. They somehow thought God was no longer a God of love. So now they were afraid of him. They were hiding behind bushes. But the very first portrait, the very first picture we have of God is God calling and looking for his children. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Totally amazing. God is pursuing us. I'm thankful, Krista, that uh, you chose not to resist that drawing power of the Lord. Okay. And hang on tight. Okay. I'm going backward. Yeah, you're okay. going backward. As a minister of the gospel, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> amen. Amen. Let's amen together. Amen.
we do have a gift for you this beautiful plan.